Yesterday, we talked about everything that changed in game. We got update 1.22 with Black Ops 4, and along with it came the second half of the operation, dubbed Survivors, which was surprising to me that we didn't see any lead up promotion or anything, save for a quick little six second teaser or flash here on Twitter. But naturally, with a second split update, the roughly 12 gigabytes of data that followed was a lot to unpack, coming with new modes, new contraband stream items, new technical fixes, new updates to maps, and so on and so forth. We talked about that yesterday and broke it all down. If you guys missed that, it's here up on the channel. But we talked about that and we ended that video talking about the items that weren't necessarily free whether it required you playing manned hours in game and grinding out entirely to unlock it organically, or if you're like the many players out there that wouldn't have the time to end up grinding out the game like that, the invisible hand pushes you towards using your credit card or whatever to end up buying things. And I said that I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this further because the whole state of everything just frustrates me. But here we are talking about it and I just felt the need to clarify some thoughts and to put my thoughts out there in the general space because the more I think about it, the more I realize just how much it really pushes people away. Not just my own interests, but the general population here of this. And the saddest part is, is I don't think that this is going to change. I've said that before and I've said it with a little bit of an air of maybe hope that I'm wrong, but I genuinely at this point don't think that it's going to change at all. I mentioned it yesterday that I'm done caring, and I mean that in a sense that literally nothing I say or do, or anyone will say or do for that matter, will change anything. It seems like any time the community speaks up about something in terms of MTX, Black Ops 4 just comes out the next update and completely doubles down and is like, you thought it couldn't get worse? Nah, it's gonna get worse. So I don't know if it's Treyarch, I don't know if it's Activision's business team, but nothing's gonna get better. Before the launch of the game, it was mentioned that we'd end up having an a la carte shop, which realistically sounded great. After years and years and years of supply drops and only having weapons and cosmetics predicated on random chance and the ability to get it through that, having the ability to buy whatever you wanted was an absolute great idea to me. It took me back to the days of Black Ops 2 DLC camos, back to Ghost with weaponry for purchasing the camos, as well as pushing a little further into the future to some capacity with Advanced Warfare with those camos as well. Buying what you want when you want it no strings attached i mean that's basic economics is it not so when that was introduced i can't say that i was too against it whenever that idea came up that we'd have an a la carte shop and honestly even up until the point whenever we got it even then it really wasn't all that bad though albeit it wasn't the greatest because the problem then became that we saw the only items being added in at that point were uniforms tags calling cards stickers and stuff that nobody cared about in that sense and so we didn't see our first camo available for purchase a la carte until absolute zero to which at that point honestly i think it's probably whenever activision was kind of like wait we're not making enough money off of this abort the entire mission and therefore then we ended up going over into where we saw with grand heist and that changed the entire dynamic and set us up on this deep rabbit hole that we've been ever so falling down the past couple of months because grand heist introduced supply crates or i guess the reintroduction of the supply drop system that we knew of from back in the day but just reskinned for black ops 4. we thought we were finally free of that system yet there they were right back in front of all of us and the one thing that i'm still bummed out about to this day is that myself and a dozen other creators in the community went out to treyarch to see that content first to end up making videos previewing the dlc that would be coming out a couple of days later whenever we put those videos up we normally do that for dlc events that's just a general marketing tool that we end up working in kind of a partnership there where creators get to end up seeing the content a little bit further but it also is like hey check this out if you enjoy it maybe check it out that's literally something that is done in the entire marketing world no matter if it's video games tech launches fashion whatever it is that's just something that happens in the business world as is but we ended up doing this we ended up talking about the really cool stuff and truth be told grand heist content update was actually pretty cool we had a new poi of ghost town and blackout we had new modes like hot pursuit we had new dlc maps we had new dlc weapons and tiers and then we made all this content saying hey this is really fun check it out it's gonna be great take advantage of it jump on and then the update came out that tuesday and we were completely blindsided by the reintroduction of the crate system and that sucked absolute ass dude we talked up all this good stuff about the update and then bam the old switcheroo happened and we looked like we were praising the update for drops. When we were out there, we had absolutely nothing showcased to us that that was a thing. We had no idea that that was ever going to happen. And then sure enough, the positive praise about the content that was free for players and for the Black Ops past then ultimately kind of was like, well, 
Were you also praising the drop system? So even at that time, it just felt super disingenuous and it hurt my trust in that sense. But at the time we saw things of Operation Grand Heist for like your wallet or something like that. There are a bunch of memes that happened at that point, but when you take a look at it, what's funny is that I don't want to use the word innocent, but it's almost innocent compared to now. We still had items in the shop for single purchase. We didn't have weapons behind crates. We still had weapons in tiers. And now if you take a look at it, it's the entire opposite for all of that stuff and more. I joked about at the beginning of Apocalypse Z that the trailers for the operations now are basically reserved trailers played on the new maps, and while we didn't get a trailer for the second half of the operation, it's definitely still the same case. While we had some major upgrades in the way of things like playlists and new modes that are a great amount of fun, the vast majority of what people will interact with, mainly weapons, are in reserves. One thing that I will say is that it doesn't seem like there's as much filler stuff this time around like weapon charms, but that also comes back and makes the same point even worse. There are 10 items between camos, mastercraft, signature weapons, and weapons themselves in the reserves this second half of the operation, which is far more than we've seen in the past, which again is just furthering that that user end thing and what people will actually play for are no longer out there in the general play space for organic unlock, and it heavily pushes the promotion of buying drops. It's almost like this game is completely done and they're just trying to get as much money out of it as possible. So they're like, well, if you want that new thing, you can put in the 40 hours that it would take or it can end up shelling out a couple of bucks here and there. And it's so much so to the point that we don't even have that a la carte system in place anymore. What we saw at the beginning of the game and what was promised at the very beginning there, where you could see an item in the shop you wanted and buy that outright, that really doesn't exist anymore. There's been five weeks so far in Operation Apocalypse. And do you wanna know how many of those items in the shop that have passed through, not counting the my deals because that's something that is completely random and on an individual basis. Do you know how many of those are an item available for individual purchase and that don't have multiple things attached to it that jack up the price as a result? You got one. The very first camo that we saw, and coincidentally, if you're reading left to right like the English language, it was actually the first thing we saw introduced within Operation Apocalypse Z. Everything else since then has had at least one thing attached to it, the majority of them, and the vast majority, having bundles of supply crates associated with them. Out of the 15 items that are available in the shop for purchase through, again, this operation, 12 of them have some sort of crate bundle associated with them. And as of recently, they actually got even worse, and that's something we'll talk about in just a second, but 12 out of 15 having supply crates and only one of those also being something just what is advertised. So that a la carte system from the very beginning doesn't exist anymore. And again, as we end up seeing these bundles happen, it jacks the price up even more. When you take a look at these prices, you had the gearhead in the first week for 1,900 COD points. That came with eight reserve crates. You had Rustman in week two that was 1,000 COD points that came with four reserve crates. You had the Liquidator come with four reserve crates as well for the same price. You had the KN Mark II for 2,000 COD points and the Deep Voyage Mastercraft Spitfire for 1,900 COD points. All of those came with reserve crates. And if you were to take a look at those for sale counterparts earlier in the year, reactive camo special orders were 700 COD points and reactive camos for sale alone were as low as 400 COD points. Blackout characters were only 800 COD points. And the thing like Mastercraft special orders like the MX-9, those are only 1000 COD points. They're upcharged in literally every single area because of those supply crates. And then as of yesterday's update, it got even worse because not only did it continue on that every single item added in with this update was a bundle, they added in two of the three, including dupe protected supply crate bundles, meaning that that's going to jack the price up even more. So what was the gray matter reactive camo probably would have gone for alone 500 COD points. That would be my guess here at that one. We ended up instead adding on another 1100 COD points based off of just four dupe protected supply crates. The Grinder Reaper bundle, that's 2000 COD points. And it's 1900 for again, another special order for the Rampart Mastercraft, which really doesn't need eight crates associated with it. The total for yesterday's update alone, just in the three shop items was 5,500 COD points, roughly 50 bucks. You could almost buy the base game of that again, just for three items. 
and you take a look at just what is available in the shop not even counting anything in reserves here just out of this operation alone five weeks it's 18,300 cod points i don't know if it's my arrogance or anything like that but i feel like it's basic economics if something has a lower price and is a value it'll sell more if you end up trying to jack up the price just to meet a quota that you want to hit for sales or something like that you're gonna one sell less and two alienate your fan base and it's a shame because this operation is on par to be the most expensive one yet and a lot of the stuff here is honestly i'll be totally honest with you really cool looking we had some really cool camos here in master crafts out of this we've had some cool blackout characters in the way of rustman and the liquidator and they're just all absurdly priced so that just brings me back to the overall general point i was trying to make here at this one we saw that some leaked conversations if you want to call it that indicated that we'd end up seeing black ops force mtx system get so much worse and we were like honestly how at this point but sure enough it does not look like it's going to stop. We thought bundle crates were bad. We thought bundle crates were jacking everything up. But this past week has proved it's going to go a little bit further, and we're going to get dupe protected bundle crates now, jacking up every single thing in the item shop as well. So it's unfortunate because the cool stuff that players can actually play around with are mostly in reserves. And then you have these things that just make that even more unobtainable for players to get something that they want. And whenever you lock this kind of stuff behind, yes, you don't need to buy anything in the shop. But those players that do, sure, five to 10 bucks here and there may not be anything that's P bank breaking for anybody. But when you compound that over week, over week, over week, it's crazy. And when you add it into just the fact that as of a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the min and max being anywhere from $2,300 just in shop items and reserve cases and things like that for items there, all the way up to 4,000 something here. It's, it's, it's crazy. That's the only way I can put it. So I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that it's more than likely not going to stop. This game's going to get milked for every single penny that it can get everybody, which sucks. And I really do hope that that conversation behind the scenes that apparently came out, that this was a testing year for the Call of Duty franchise and how they're going to take systems going forward. I really hope that that is all it is, is a testing year. And God, do I hope this doesn't happen for Modern Warfare. Because everything that we've seen so far for Modern Warfare, I'm actually really stoked for. I don't think that I've been this excited for a base Call of Duty in recent years to my recollection. So if there's any hope that this stays out of that, good God, do I hope it does. But that's we're going to wrap it up. Just wanted to elaborate on my thoughts a little bit here to talk a little bit about further because I talked about it yesterday, but I don't know if I really did it justice. And there are a couple of things I wanted to bring up today here as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, all things Call of Duty, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered here on the channel. So if you guys are interested in any of that, hit that subscribe button. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter or Instagram, there's the best place to get connected with out of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So you guys check out conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below but all that's said out of the way thanks so much for watching it's a bummer the game's going the direction it is but i'll see you guys later take care and peace